All right, moving on to uh, worksheet B for chapter four. So we're going to be looking at problems number three and four in this video. So we got population of insects growing at a rate of 6% per month. So initial population was 1,000. Um, so we get kind of this uh, formula that we often work with on this. We got a future value. We got a present value. Um, anytime we are growing, uh, we would use one plus the rate with an exponent of time. Um, and so uh, depending like on this one, we're dealing with months. And so our time is going to represent months. Um, if it's something different than that, we can alter that. But this is kind of the general idea for these. Uh, remember for uh, rates of growth, we do one plus the rate. If we are decreasing, then it would be one minus the rate uh, as, as these get set up. So find the size of the population after four months. So we got four periods of time, 6% per month. Uh, so starting with the present value of 1,000. And we got one plus the rate. And in this case, time is everything is in months. So four months gives us an exponent of four. Uh, so for that guy, we just throw that into the calculator. So we're looking at our 1,000. We got 1.06 raised to fourth power. And so this is what we got. So keep in mind, you know, in any IB test question, your answer can always be exact or three sig figs unless the directions say otherwise. So uh, for this one, um, remember, we, if the directions don't say, it's you can just go to three sig figs. So in this case, uh, you would be safe to just write it as 1,260. Uh, that would be three sig figs. Um, so that's, that's the safe way to go unless it says uh, something more. So, so if it said two decimal places or to the nearest integer or, uh, you know, in, in a case like this, we're talking about insects. So realistically, that would be like a whole number. So, um, you know, it, it would make sense to round to the nearest integer or something like that. But um, again, in, in a test setting, to play it safe, you can always do three sig figs or exact if the directions don't say otherwise. So here we go, find the size of the population after a further year. So they are talking about 12 months after this. Um, so kind of two ways you could approach it. You could treat this as our present value and do an exponent of 12, or you could go back to the initial population um, and do an exponent of 16 because you have four months plus 12 more months. Um, what I like to do to play it safe is go back to the original because what if we made a mistake and this is wrong? Um, not to mention we're also now dealing with a rounded number. Uh, so we would be a little off to continue using this amount. Um, so just to play it safe, what I would do for part B is, um, again, just go back to the initial um, of 1,000. So again, I got 1 plus the rate. And I would use a power of 16 because it was four months plus a further 12 months. Um, so that's what I would do to get a, a nice, safe, accurate answer on that one. So throwing that into the calculator, we have our new population. So again, 2540 would be a safe answer. That's rounded to three sig figs. So that's the one I would go with since the directions don't say otherwise on that one. All right, moving on. Moving into part C, it says they're giving us kind of a general expression here for what we've just been working with. So it says the size after T months, which is what we've been using it for, is, is given by a function. They're calling it S, and they're just given a general layout for that. Uh, so they want us to identify what, uh, what does that value represent and what does that value represent. Well, if you look at what we've been using it for already, the number sitting in front, the coefficient, has represented the initial population. So n is representing the 1,000. And a, so the guy sitting here is the base of the exponent, has been our growth rate. And in this case, our growth rate is the 1.06. And so that's going to be our a value. So an alternative way of representing the size of the population is looking like this. Um, this is one that you would have seen way back in Algebra 2. Uh, we used to we used to call it pert. It was uh, p equals um, you got like the e to the r t 
um, formula, this represented a sort of a constant compounding instead of a specific compounding like monthly. Um, That's what we used to use that for. I wouldn't use this formula unless the directions specifically told you to use it. Um, this, this is again kind of a, a continual compounding. Uh, so this isn't one that we typically use unless they specifically tell you to like this problem does. Um, so otherwise I, I really wouldn't use that. I would stick with uh, what we've been using so far in this problem. So looking at the two functions compared now, so we have the monthly compounding that we were using. You have the continual compounding that they're identifying here, and it's saying figure out what the value of k would be to six decimal places. So here's one of those clear directions we got to make sure we stick within the answer. Uh, that trumps the other directions of three sig figs or exact because it specifically says six decimal places. So we will stick with that. So we're going to be looking for the value of k. We can see that's part of the exponent. So right away we're going to be thinking logs uh, and solving this. So it says equate those two functions. So uh, we got the s function right here where n was 1,000. Uh, we had the 1.06 for the growth rate. And that was represented by t in months. That was a monthly compounding. Comparing that to the continual compounding, we got the 1,000. We got a base of E, and then we got KT as our exponent. So this is our setup that we're looking at so far. Now we are uh, solving for that value of K to six decimal places. Uh, right off the bat, I can divide both sides by 1,000 and get rid of those. I will then take the natural log of both sides, and I'm going to use a natural log because I have a base of E. Uh, so and again, remember our log properties, that's going to allow me to move this exponent to the front of the log. So on the left side, I have t times natural log of 1.06. On the right side, I can put the kt in front. And I got the natural log of e. So here we are for the next stage. A couple things we could do at this point. One would be to divide out the t from both sides, so that can go away for us. Um, we also know that any natural log automatically has a base of E. Um, and so there's an old log rule that anytime your base and this value are the same, automatically the exponent, which is a 1, is your answer. So this just turns into a 1 on the right side, so we're left with just K on the right. And I have just the natural log of 1.06 on the left. And that's all we have to do, throw that into our calculator. Oops, so let's use natural log 1.06, and we're going to go to six decimal places on that. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We're looking at the eight, which is going to round up to a nine. Uh, so we're going to go 0 0.058269 eight, would be our solution for that. So looking at part E, so use going back to the uh, monthly compounding setup that we had earlier, where this was 1,000 and that was 1 1.06. So it says find the value of... Um, Sorry, calculate um, S, which is the future population, uh, when we had 15 and a half months and 16 and a half months. Uh, so I'm not going to go through all of that. All you have to do is punch in the numbers. So put your 1,000 right there, put your 1.06 right there, and then you're just throwing in different numbers for the exponent. So uh, plug in this for T and calculate your answer. Then throw in that for T and calculate your answer. So that's pretty easy calculator stuff to do right there. So last part of this question, part F. So use those two values that we just got for part E uh, to get an estimate for the rate uh, in insects per month. Um, so even though they told us up above it was 6% per month, um, we are getting a rate solely based on those two responses uh, to kind of calculate our own rate um, of change in this. So again, remember rate of change, that's like finding a slope. Uh, rate of change is y minus y over x minus x just like finding a slope or a gradient um, on something like that. So later we'll be doing uh, derivatives to, to deal with rates of change. So uh, for this, these would be like the two x's, the 15 and a half and 16 and a half. Their results would be the two y values. So if you just take your two answers on part E um, and did uh, this answer minus this answer over 16.5 minus 15.5, 
So you're just calculating that rate of change, y minus y over x minus x, uh, to get your rate for that last part of the question. So even though we know that rate of change was at 6%, this is now giving us uh, a rate in insects per month. So again, that's why we put the y value on top, because it's insects over months, right? And so these represented the two months. And then the insects were represented by their solutions that we got when we plugged those in. So that's why we did the y minus y is sort of insects minus insects over months minus months and in order to get our rate of change. So now instead of getting a percent like we had up above, now we're getting specific insects per month on this last part. Moving on to number four. So National Forest received a request for 370 permits in 2010. Uh, number of yearly requests n years after 2010 was expected to be this. And so uh, they're, they're giving us our function. That was the initial term. Here is our growth rate. Um, it's, it's bigger than one, so we know it's going to go up. So that's why we call it a, a growth rate, because it was one plus 15%. Um, and then we have our n represented by um, number of years after 2010. Uh, so find the number of permits requested in 2014. So that would be four years after 2010. So that's going to be our exponent. So for part I here, I'm not going to walk you through the calculator because it's really simple. Just sub in a four for n uh, and that was going to give us our solution. Um, do, do keep in mind, um, just as far as interpreting the exponent, uh, that you always kind of read carefully as to what they are calling it. So in this case, because it was n years after 2010, well, that's four years after 2010. So that's, that's where we get our exponent of four. Um, that, that type of wording can change. So it's just important that you read careful for what they're asking for on that. So in this case, now they're saying find the year. So we're going to be trying to figure out the exponent where the number of requests would at least double that of 2010. So uh, in this case, we know the future value, which is this, is going to be double this amount right here, so 740, is going to be the future amount. We got the 370 as the initial amount. And we're going to be solving for our exponent on this. So we're thinking logs since we're solving for an exponent. Um, so just in typical solving fashion, just divide that over. We already know it goes in twice because of the wording in the question right there. So. We got our 2, we got our 1.5 to the one five to the n. Uh, don't go by that. So 1.15 to the n. And this is where we can turn to logs to solve this. So uh, again, I know there's different ways of using logs for this. Some people take the log of both sides. Some people take the natural log of both sides. It doesn't matter which you use. Because we have a really nice calculator feature with the log base feature, um, I tend to just put this into log form. So I do a log with a base of 1.15 of 2 equals our exponent. Um, and then we just throw that into our log base feature of our calculator. So again, if you just went under math, go down to the one that says log base. And we can just sub in the numbers. So uh, really a nice way to go for doing stuff like that. So now we just have to interpret that correctly. So um, as you can see by that number, it is shy of five years, which means we have completed four years and we are into the fifth year, but we have not yet completed five years of time. So we have not yet hit 2015. Uh, we are still in 2014 for that. So by the, by the time we hit 2015, uh, we will uh, more than double what we had in 2010. All right, moving on. So next part, in 2010, 36,500 people visited the forest, and in the nth year after that, the number of people who visit is modeled by that function that you see right there. So first part of this, find the value of P in 2014. So again, this, this is now represented by four years after 2010 by that statement. So all you'd be doing is plugging in a four for N to get that solution. So that's just a simple uh, calculator uh, set up for that one. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, because people put these wrong in their calculator all the time, uh, if you're going to do all of this in one shot, you got to remember to put your entire denominator in parentheses. 
Otherwise, if you don't, if you just type it in the way you see here, your calculator will do this divided by 15 first, and then add this at the end, and you're going to get something different. So you got to put your entire denominator in parentheses. So 2i. So 2020, so now we are 10 years later. Will the number of the forest visitors be doubled that in 2010 explained? So for this one, so this would be a, so 10 years later, so if I sub in a 10 for n and get that answer, um, you're going to see that you do get a number that is more than twice that amount. So if we compare 2 times this to the answer of this, where we subbed in a 10 for n, you'll see this number is greater, so the answer to that would be yes. And that's it for Worksheet B.